And welcome to the first installment uh, of what will be a regular uh, monthly show for a year. We're trying this as a, uh, as, uh, as a project for a year. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, I had started doing shows called Bergeron Briefs for the last several years to kind of supplement the presentations I do at the Senior Center, but realized these were never really about law. They were always about the people and programs that you, as a senior in um, Ashland, need to kind of know about. One of my guests during one of those shows was actually Steve Mitchell. Um, and so we had, and, and, and he was talking about his work as a selectman as part of the dementia-friendly communities effort here. And so when I, when I was thinking of changing this to a weekly show, which, or excuse me, a monthly show, which we're calling Frank and Mary in Ashland, many of you have heard of my friends Frank and Mary, um, um, we figured that we would, I would try to, we would try to focus on the issues that Steve sees here in Ashland as being really crucial issues, senior issues, and that we try to make the show be about all of that. So, Steve, I wanted to ask you if you could start off by just kind of talking about, as you've thought about this show, what you what you think would be topics that you think we'll be talking about over the next, you know, over the next several months. Sure. I think one of the things we also want to do is encourage folks who are watching, if they've got ideas, to just let the folks at the station know, right. so that we can we can talk about others. But just to talk about how you're how you're imagining this show going. Great. Right. Right. So thank you, Art. Uh, so again, my name is Steve Mitchell. Uh, I'm a 45-year uh, resident here in Ashland, and uh, almost I, a native. Almost uh, a native. not quite a townie. Your, your but, kids, your uh, kids are townies. So. But my, my son, son is, is right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, I serve on the board of selectmen, and uh, one of my uh, uh, individual initiatives, I guess, uh, is uh, a interest in uh, senior issues, and you know, being in that demographic, it's kind of. Uh, Falls naturally on my on my lap. Uh, they defer. So, they defer to you a lot. Well, of I, oh, there's the I, old I guy. I believe gonna, I'm the <laughs> oldest uh, uh, the oldest member of the current board. Yeah. So I think you know I, it naturally gravitates to me. But it's something that I uh, I've enjoyed getting involved in. Uh, I spend time at our community center uh, with our elder services director and. You know, it's something that I've learned is uh, such a, a critical part of our community, and I, I'm not going to say that it's underserved demographic, but I think that it's a demographic that uh, a lot of other residents in Ashland don't understand maybe the, the issues that, uh, that uh, residents face as they get older. So right. when Art and I talked about doing this show, uh, we, we decided on doing, uh, you know, a comprehensive uh, view of what issues and concerns uh, seniors face as they age in a, in a community like Ashland. And so some of the things that, uh, you know, we're, we're planning to do as, uh, as we go forward here is we're going to spend time on, uh, on a explaining and describing and initiating a dementia-friendly community concept, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But we're also going to uh, have an opportunity to talk about, uh, to meet our Council on Aging. We've got a, a, a very, a great group of, of seniors that, uh, that work uh, on behalf of senior issues, uh, advocate for them, and we'd like to have them uh, be guests here. Uh, there are tax relief programs for seniors. A lot of seniors just are not aware of them. So that's something that, that would be uh, important a to communicate. Cru a crucial issue. You know, there's, th issue. there are services, the services that are available in town, I think it's important for residents to know that. People that, that do go to the senior center, they, they become aware of it. But there's so many people out there that aren't. And so, you know, we'll try to uh, communicate the, the services that are available. Yeah, and I know, Steve, that's one of the reasons that when I started the show, because it, it happens a lot, because I go to a lot of senior centers. And of course, if you go to the senior center, well, then you know. Yeah. But, but it's always, so the, the same people know about all the programs, and so many people don't. That's right. So, you know, it's, there's housing issues. Seniors have housing issues. Uh, you know, they could be living alone. They could be living uh, 
in isolation, so to speak. Uh, so there, that's, that's an issue in itself. Transportation, senior transportation is an issue. Uh, we'd love to, uh, you know, one of our shows, we intend to have uh, our state senator, Karen Spilka, and our state rep, uh, Jack Lewis, appear with us as well. I think both of them are very in tune with, with uh, senior issues. And I, I, know, I, I know, I don't know Representative Lewis, I know, I know Senator Spilka has just been a tremendous, That's tremendous right. support. So, and then, you know, other, other uh, topics include health issues in general that, that seniors will we will all face as uh, as we get older and older so you know we've got a, we've got a host of topics here to speak of you know today we're going to focus on uh, the dementia friendly community concept or yeah. and you know just quickly i'm, I'm going to let art speak to the dementia friendly concept because he's been very involved in it for a number of years but in essence a dementia friendly community is a town where people people with dementia are understood, respected, and supported. And so I'll allow, allow uh, Art to expand on that. And, and I think that's, a, that's actually a really good summary of what that means, because so often you'll say the term dementia-friendly community, and people will be like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. But then the second thing is, well, so what is that exactly? And oftentimes I would, I would, I would describe it, <clears throat> I think about this issue a lot. My mother died in a nursing home. My oldest brother has got an early stage diagnosis. He's uh, 10 years older than me, so I always figure, so what I got about eight to 10 years to make my community dementia friendly right before I'm gonna, I'm gonna really be needing this. But it's really a community where um, I can stay, where I can stay in my hometown um, and be safe and not be embarrassed, still be able to live a life, you know, that I feel like is a life of dignity, even if my memory's bad, no matter how bad it is. And, and so, that really, really involves, therefore, looking at a whole bunch of things that we do, places that we go, whether it's restaurants or, 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 or the bank or, the, or town hall, right? And trying to figure out how those places can be a place where I still want to go. So I'm not just going to be stuck in my house. And, and the way that this originally came up, and I'm just, I'm just going to take a few minutes to, to get, mention this or to talk about this, was I remember being at a seminar about five years ago, there was a guy speaking named John Zeisel, tremendous, wonderful person, who actually had developed uh, a couple of memory care um, units, uh, one of them in Marlboro, actually, at a place called New Horizons, which is an assisted living there. He was really one of the leaders in this. And he was talking about dementia, and he was talking about what they provide there for folks who've got, you know, late, kind of, I want to say, later stages of, of memory loss. And in the course of that, I, was, I kind of raised my hand and I said, so is there any place where a community has really looked at this? Because this is, nobody wants to leave their home. The question is, can you create a community where you can feel like that? And Zeisel said, actually, no. He didn't know of one in Massachusetts. So I called the folks at the Alzheimer's Association and I and went to an event. I was at an event doing something else and asked. And, and one of the people there, their education person said, I've heard of this thing in Minnesota. And that's all I knew, right? So I talked to my paralegal, and, and because I can't do, you, all you young people, you can do the tech <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. So she, I said, find, find this. How does this work? So of course, the, you know, in two hours, she had all the information, the website and all. And I found that they had, there was a state legislative initiative from about 10 years before where they were really looking globally. Minnesota, like Massachusetts, one of the national leaders in terms of trying to look at senior yeah, issues. Very progressive. Terrific, terrific. Yeah. Also have one of the best health systems, like Massachusetts. Um, and and, and they were, so they were looking at where is the state going and how can we be addressing this cluster of issues because it was showing up more and more. And, and they came back and, and, and said, one of the things that you need to do is to deal with this issue of making our individual communities, and there, like here, there are hundreds of individual communities, um, dementia friendly. And so they had set up a, a, a grant program at the state level to give small grants, $10,000 grants, to communities that agreed to get a group of volunteers together and spend some time trying to figure out kind of what to do. So we heard about that. 
And I mentioned it to Christine Alessandro. I don't know if you met Christine. Christine is the executive director of Baypath Elder Services. We did, yes. So Baypath, yes. right? So they're the, they're the regional right. ASAP, yeah. or Aging Services Access Point. Right. She's been on. She's Look, actually been to the Ashland Senior if Center. If you recall, when we initiated this, we yep. we invited a, a great cross representation of our community, business, yep. um, our religious organizations. Um, our local government, public safety, and so on, and we had a great a roundtable discussion about that. Christine was there, and Christine was and there. So, so Baypath led this, and, and that and was the initial initial meeting by which we then that started here. That's so, right. And 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 so Christine got very interested in this idea, um, and so she said, "Well, let's get within there. They have 27 communities, including Ashland, and they also and they service my community, Marlboro." and Hudson and Northboro, the communities around there. So she said, let's get a group of senior center directors in contiguous towns that are interested in this, and we'll go to Minnesota. And we'll see if this is all smoke and mirrors. Because you know, you, sometimes you, know, you do the Google, and, and you look at a website, and you go, is this a real, you know? I, I always, in parenthetic, it always reminds me of the cartoon from once again when we were younger in the 90s, when the internet was just starting. And it was a great picture of a, of a, of a, uh, of a it was a dog, it was a Dalmatian. And obviously his master wasn't around, so he was up at, at, on the chair with, uh, on the little desk in front of the computer screen. And the caption was on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. I always <laughs> loved that. <laughs> so you know, you, I wanted to see if this thing was, was real, right? So, so we went out, and we had the three senior center directors from those three towns. And after two days of kind of being trained by these folks, we were really persuaded that this was really meaningful. And so Christine came back, she got a grant from the Metro West Health Foundation um, to hire someone, and we thought this was an important piece, to have someone who could be staffed to this volunteer group so that they could have someone to just help organize the meetings and make sure the coffee's there and all right. that stuff, right? And so we started in those three communities, and each of those communities did an effort like the one that you folks ended up doing in Ashland, right? right? Yeah. Uh, and went through that, through that whole process, and then each community developed its own volunteer group, and each community is now going in, you know, in a slightly different direction in terms of what they're trying to do to become a dementia-friendly community. Right. And, and I know that, and I know you're gonna talk about some of this stuff in terms of the ideas that came out in Ashland, right. but there's similar ideas that came out in these other communities, and then the goal, Christine's goal was to, to, once we had done that, to, to, to look to replicate that in other places. And I know that the next two communities were Westboro and Ashland, right? right? And there was a wonderful woman that they had hired, Susan, Susan Longmore, um, to, to work with you folks. Right. And so just to give you, you know, just as an example, one of the things that we found in all three of the communities was that each of the, the, the there was this notion of developing a dementia registry a place wh where you could, if you wanted to, it was all volunteer, sign up with the local police department so that if, you're, you, you, know, if, you're, you, if you or your loved one right, um, was, had wandered, that it would be easy to find them, right? And, and so because, because th there would be a picture. Because if you signed up, you kind of give your information and you give a contact and then you right. also have a picture. So that they could actually be on the phones of the of the pol of the policemen that are out in the field. And that's that's a, that's a great point, Art, because very important that uh, you know when a, a police officer approaches someone, the, the more information they have, the better. So that if they, if if uh, a dementia sufferer is in the registry, it becomes a whole different interaction. The, the officer knows. Uh, and by training how to how to conduct that interaction totally different. different than any other interaction they may have in the course of a day right right so so you're going important. you're going to somebody's house to do a domestic dispute right that's a very different kind of dispute that you're you're approaching it differently if you right. know somebody there has dementia one of the examples that i remember our police chief had given is he said you know when you go to when when you stop somebody right you stop somebody you pull them over you know for whatever reason right if, and that and, and person rolls down the window, if that's a person with dementia, right, that person is going to be extremely agitated and kind of aggressive, right, and, and looking, you know, confused about finding his wallet and stuff. So he acts just like a person who has got a drug or alcohol problem. Right. 
And for the, for the officers that had never been trained with dealing with dementia, that's how you're trained to react. Get out of the car, hands on the hood, you know, totally, totally different, different from, right. oh, Mr. Bergeron. You know, I see, I see, you know, that I know your, your wife, your wife called, you know, can, can, we, can we help you get home? You know, right. it so, just changed it. That's right. But that was just, that's just one example, you know, and there were, and there were several. And I know that, uh, that, that, you know, you've talked to me about some of the things you're interested in doing here. Yeah. But so, so that was what we did. And, and we were hoping that, among other things, by doing that in these communities, we could get folks like you and other communities like Ashland to say, oh, this is all possible you know, to, to, to do this kind of analysis, because I think the bottom line that we really felt was important was this is all about community. This is, you can say this is dementia-friendly Massachusetts or dementia-friendly big thing, but I don't live in Massachusetts. I live in Marlboro. I live in Marlboro. Right. I'm interested in what happens in North Row, the next town, but not really. <laughs> I'm really interested in my town. And we felt if we could structure it that way, people would feel much more connected to it. Right. So, so that was the that, idea. Uh, that initial meeting uh, was generated by, you know, through Bay Path and yeah. other services, and again, as you describe, uh, approaching the communities within their umbrella. And uh, at that point, um, our director of elder services, uh, Joanne Duffy, approached me and, you know, said, Rope this is you, something. Ro roped you in? Well, you <laughs> no, know, no, I didn't, uh, it, it's, she's, she's, a, she's a, a great director and, uh, you know, she's just such a, a great asset to our community. But, you know, it's, uh, she said, this is something I think we should get into. Can yeah. you, would you help me with this? And I yeah. said, absolutely. And from there, we established a, uh, a again, a, a nice cross representation of, of a committee uh, that has worked over, uh, you know, probably the last year to get very close to establishing our first programs, but but and it takes some time. That it way. does take time, and, and, and the, the reason why it takes time is yeah, because, I was going to say talk about how you know yeah. how that worked. So it takes it takes time because the program that uh, the grant requires the communities to to do surveys and to. Mm -hmm. uh, address the the process in a certain way right. so we were obligated to do it according to the the rules and regulations of the minnesota the act for El you alzheimer's right? act on all the right. minnesota so, model, right. so which, model. which by the way has also been adopted as the national model if you go if you want to learn about this yeah and you go to dementia friendly america right and, and, and they talk about how you could get started. And, and you can this Google Act on Alzheimer's as well, and yes. that'll get, get you to a website, ton of information. Uh, but it's, uh, so, so it was once we established yeah. you know, that we were gonna do this, then uh, Susan Longmore uh, was our key contact, obviously, and we established the, uh, the protocols for doing the, uh, the surveys, and did the surveys over a period of time, and, and it's interesting because the, there's uh, a community is broken down into a number of sectors. So you would have a financial sector, a business sector, a, a, a oh, local health, government sector. Health care. Right. So right. you would go and so the surveys were, were um, tuned into each of those sec sectors. So we focused on, on initially we, we focused on local government and local businesses yeah. because we felt that uh, as you talked earlier you go into banks all the time you go into restaurants all the time you go to town hall all the time and so those were kind of the key touch points at this right stage and you must and you get interesting stories right from the folks you're talking yeah i to. mean it, it's interesting because i think uh you know we didn't learn any great knowledge from the surveys, but, you know, it confirmed what I think we all understood and right. understood, you know, what path we should be taking. So, and I, so, and I suppose, it, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I suppose one of the best parts of the survey, too, is that the person you're interviewing gets to realize that they're not there in it alone either. The, the kind of the behaviors that they've had to, the things they've had to deal with right. are the same kinds of stressful Things well, that a lot of other people have had to deal with. You know, I, I can imagine a you know someone that is a dementia sufferer who's lost, goes into a gas station for directions, gets directions, he leaves, is confused, comes back to the gas station and asks same for gas directions. station. 
So, you know, you can see the value in having, you know, the, those sorts of uh, touch points. Yes. Have training, understanding. Yes. You know, and, yes. And, uh, you know, understand that there's, there's a dynamic here that's different and, you know, you need to think about it differently. So, so that we've, we went through that process uh, and at which point uh, we're basically it's on our lap to as a community to yep. decide, you know, what we're going to do to to initiate a dementia friendly community. Now, as you mentioned, there's a lot of different activities that that can be done. I mean, you know, just training it itself is probably the number, the first thing that needs to be done. And, you know, training for for town staff, training for um, first responders, first responders. Right, the police and the fire. Right. Um, so those that that's number one. Uh, after that, there's there's a lot of things you, you can talk about uh, about memory cafes. Um, what we're what we we decided to do was say, so what, to what, initiate what we yeah. uh, what's called the Purple Table program. The Purple Table, right? So the Purple Table program is is uh, is a purple is the assigned color, the recognized color for for Alzheimer's and, and dementia uh, spectrum. So. Uh, the Purple Table is a program uh, that uh, coordinates with a, with a local restaurant that provides a space, a safe space for a dementia sufferer and a caregiver to have some quality time out in the community and to be able to in enjoy- In a real place, in a real restaurant. Right. That's right. So it's, it incorporates obviously training the staff uh, it incorporates maybe identifying a particular space in the restaurant, maybe a time of day as well. So uh, that is going to be Ashland's initial programming for dementia friendly. Focusing so, on, and, and, and by the way, related to that, yeah. I invite people for, from Ashland, if you're ever around, this is an ad, right? Go to, so now no, that's terrible, I'm going to forget it. It's Red Red Raven. So Red Raven Red Pub in Acton, which used to be Acton. the Rusty Scupper many years ago, if anybody remembers the yeah. Rusty Scupper, but right the Red Raven Pub. Yeah. And the owner of uh, the Red Raven, Jennifer, is uh, very in involved in the Purple Table program. And her, her uh, mother died of dementia. So there's she, a she, she was taking care of Purple Table right. .com is a, and we, we will be joining that because we, we will be actually one of few restaurants that are involved in this program at this point in time. But there's yeah. a series of restaurants by which, uh, you know, again, a, a sufferer and a caregiver can go and enjoy a, a night out, a couple of hours out of their normal re routine. Right. And, uh, and it, it's, I think the important thing is that, you know, it, there's nothing that is uh, going to identify that this is a dementia sufferer. Right. There's no. So, somebody asked me about this table. and said, is there a purple table? There's no, there's no. no purple table. There's no <laughs> right. sign that says right. this. There's no in the corner table. You know, right. It's integrated into the restaurant. But right. you know, the staff is, is aware, the staff is understanding, the staff is supportive. And they, right, they so, know the little things. Right. As, as I always, I, I talked to my, a friend of mine about this. I said, you know, the issue about a restaurant, right, is you go to any restaurant. You get this menu, you know, it's 50 items. I don't, you know, I have trouble with that now, although that's saying so, something about, so, right. but, so I want a restaurant, <laughs> I'm going to go in, the waitress is going to, first of all, he's going to know that I have some memory issues, right? Right. So she's not going to ask me questions from over here. She's going to ask me questions in front of me. Right. Because the more I, the more I have dementia issues, the more my field of vision shrinks. She's going to say, Mr. Bergeron. What do you think today? You want the chicken or the fish? <laughs> or even better, you know, Mr. Bergeron, you were here last week, you had the chicken. You know, you want that chicken? That was, that's what I want. That's right. That's so right. now I'm, I'm, I'm having that experience. And just one other thing I'll mention about that scheduling that you were talking about is that, you know, think to the number of restaurants that you've gone to at two o'clock in the afternoon. Who's there? Nobody's there. Yeah. So to be able to, so a part of the reservation thing is you're calling for a purple table, they're going to suggest. So, you know, maybe you want to go around these times so it'll be quieter. That's right. 
You know, just little things. So little things. To, to go to that, that point, we are, are, the initial restaurant that we have identified is, is Erica's Restaurante on Front Street in, in downtown Ashland. Erica's Restaurante. Yes. And uh, so they're going to be our first. And I hope it's going to be the first of a number of restaurants yeah. that will be engaged in this. Because I think there's a, a number of other restaurants that would work very well. Uh, and and that's great. You, th so you, that's, you think we can get someone from there to be our, one of our guests? On a, I, I, I'm sure we can arrange yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but that's our first uh, foray into into programming. So, training uh, certainly for staff, yeah. first responders, and then training for the staff at Erica's, uh, and then initiating the the program. And from there, we'll see. You, you know, it, there's so many different. Um, programs that we can initiate. There's a million but, ideas. you know, we need to focus. You know, and, it's funny that you, you mentioned that because, we, you know, this, like you, um, Westboro was doing some stuff at the same time you were. They yeah. were the, kind of the next two communities. And one of the things that we discovered there, who knew, no, we, didn't, we hadn't heard about this, is the, the fire chief there has initiated this, this program, he's got, he's got a name for it, um, where if you, if you sign up, right, They'll actually, um, they, they'll, they will do, they will provide a key to that house, right? Like a safe key in a lockbox, right? So that if there's an emergency, right? If, and for some reason, if, if they get a 911 call, for some reason, they can get access to right. the house, right? Yeah. But it's all like computer controlled and all of this stuff. And he mentioned about, the, I, I, and by the way, I know I've, I've dealt with a community in, Nant in Nantucket. They have a program called Safe Return, where they, they will um, actually get volunteers from the community to go to the police department every day, right? For, once again, for folks who have signed up, just to give people a call. Right. Just to give people, how you doing? Yeah. So talk, Good. Or talk a little bit about memory cafes, because that's so, something we spent a lot of time talking about. Yeah. And there are a number of them in our immediate area. So mem memory cafes. And also, we, you know, we could bring in a guest to talk about these. First yeah. one in Massachusetts happened actually in Marlboro. A woman named Tammy Pazaricki, who whose day job is she runs a, a full day um, a supportive day program. She heard about it from Europe. The notion behind a memory cafe is it is a place where you and your, your, your loved one, you and your caregiver go, right? If you've got early stage dementia, right? And, but your caregiver stays, right? And, and, and the idea is that you've got some food available, you've probably got entertainment, or you've got some kinds of things that you're going to be doing while you're there, right? But, the, but like with the regular party, you know, those are just the extras, right? But the real, because the real point of it is to get people together and have them have a good time for a few hours. And now, because there are so many of them, and we can probably get the station to give the website, th there are, I want to say there are 83 of them now in Massachusetts. Yeah. So if you've got a loved one and you're feeling trapped, you just can't get out of the house, you can say, Frank, you know, it's Tuesday today. You want to go to Ashland? You want to go, you can go to all these That's different right. places. And I just to have that experience. You, know, you touched on the, I think, uh, the, the coral, the, the, the flip side of uh, dementia suffer, of course, is the caregiver. The caregiver. And, you know, we need to, and, and, and I think maybe at our next show, uh, we spend some time talking about caregivers as well and the need for caregivers to have some ability uh, for relief or uh, a change in environment. And so yes. we need to talk about yes. that as well. So And uh, encouraging those caregivers to not, who are being very protective. Right of the person that they love, yeah. and they don't want them to be embarrassed, and so their tendency is to have them never leave the house. And therefore, it's just the two of them, right. and they're on this little island, and the caregiver is dying. That's right. And to try to figure is, out some root of some You know, we're all, we're living longer. Yeah. We are all going to, maybe we're not going to suffer from full-blown Alzheimer's or, right. you know, some extreme uh, part of the dementia spectrum, but we're all going to suffer from some sort of memory issue, issue, right? So I think uh, uh, certainly the boomers, it's 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 going to be a, a bigger and bigger issue. So now I want to mention before we go, yeah, that you had talked to me about the guests that you want to have next time, right? And you're hoping to have Joanne Duffy. So Joanne Duffy, who is our uh, director of elder services at the Ashland Community Center, 
And uh, Joanne can talk, you know, obviously direct experience with uh, interacting with, with uh, our elder uh, population on a, on a regular basis. And then uh, the second guest uh, I'm planning to uh, invite is Dr. Ruth Remington from Framingham State University, who has been engaged in, in work in, in dementia for, and that's her specialty. For years. So, yeah. For years. And is, one of, the, and is to, one of the people that directs the nursing programs out of the school that actually put nurses in 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 in, you know, in, in real positions like yeah. during the during their their training. So, I think so that could be very be interesting. A great great uh, both of them I think will will add tremendous uh, experience to this. Yes. So. Yes. So listen, yeah. thank you very much for being willing great. to do this. It was great. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think so. I'm I'm looking forward to the next show. Right. I hope you you've enjoyed this show and that you can and that you'll join us with Joanne Duffy, your Council on Aging Director, and Ruth Rem Dr. or uh, Dr. Ruth Remington, who is just terrific. And give us your ideas. If you want to email us your ideas here at the station, so that we can get a sense if you've got shows that you really think are very important to seniors. So I really want to thank you all for uh, watching. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Frank and Mary in Ashland. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.